Kaza joins us now in Abuja. Phil, as always, great to have you on the show. Now, last we heard, Nigeria's government and these labor unions were engaged in last-minute talks, uh, of course, to avert tomorrow's uh, strike. What do we know about the progress they've made so far? Well, thank you, Uche. Uh, what we know so far is that the meeting has begun, uh, the meeting between the uh, organized labor unions and the representative of all relevant government authorities in this, uh, as, as far as this matter is concerned. Uh, however, the meeting is uh, currently behind closed doors. Uh, it's, uh, the, the press is not, they're not allowed to gain entrance into these consultations. So. Uh, of course, it, the last time we had such a meeting, it ran into uh, early hours of the morning uh, before the press uh, was, before the information was made available to the press or journalists and reporters who were waiting and standing by for this update. So uh, we are monitoring the situation right here in Abuja, the nation's capital, and definitely uh, the, the outcome of th this meeting would either make or mar uh, the progress that has been made so far. You, 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 you're looking at five months of uh, deliberation since these, uh, this uh, Minimum Wage Act was signed uh, by the National Assembly. So uh, we're keeping our fingers crossed. We're, we're monitoring the situation to see what exactly uh, the outcome of the meeting will be, whether it will uh, ensure that the strike does not hold tomorrow or uh, the strike will go as planned. Mm. Well, Phil, is there any hope uh, that the two will find some uh, common ground, given that as of yesterday, we know the NLC and the governor's uh, forums, they still disagreed over the specific uh, salary adjustments. Could we see a strike tomorrow? Is there hope that they could find uh, an agreement? Well, at this point, it's difficult to see exactly uh, whether uh, there would be some way forward or some uh, deliberations or uh, middle ground to ensure that the strike does not hold. Uh, because we've seen, like I said earlier, we've had this consultation for five months now uh, between the labor unions and uh, the, uh, the, the government officials. Uh, what we're looking at is uh, that as far as the minimum wage has been signed into law, uh, the, the the, uh, you know, the, the workers between or below the level uh, grade seven and below, they've been sorted out. The uh, minimum wage for them has been implemented to about $83 from the previous $50. But um, the challenge that we have here is that between seven to 14, we'll have about, uh, that's 29% wage increase demand by the workers. And then from 14 upwards, they are insisting on 24%, uh, while the government is saying they cannot you know, meet up with those um, expenses, th those expenditure for the workers. Uh, there, there has to be some form of, um, um, you know, progress. There has to be some form of understanding between both parties. The Minister of Labor is also saying that the recurrent expenditure as we speak is um, not, uh, you know, encouraging and therefore both parties have to come to a round table to decide how they would um, end up paying these, uh, d this demand by the workers. Mm. Well, Phil, in President Buhari's proposed budget, which of course was tabled uh, last week, we know the government now plans to implement a value-added tax increase uh, from about 5% to 7.5%. Now, I ask or I say this because the government's argument here is that uh, the state cannot afford to pay the requested amount uh, to its workers, and they even say, go as far as saying it could harm the economy. So what are your thoughts, Phil? Is Nigeria's economy ready to handle uh, this expected or the suggested rise uh, in minimum wages. Uh, I'm sorry, Uchi, but I, I think I lost you at some point there. If you could take that question again. Sure, Phil. Well, my question to you is, is Nigeria's government economically ready to handle a rise in uh, the national minimum wage? Uh, I'm not sure I got the, the exact question there, but if you're saying, uh, if you're asking if the Nigerian economy can handle uh, the payment of minimum wage, um, of course it's, it's uh, more like mixed reactions. Uh, some analysts say that uh, first of all the country will, will need to look at the cost of governance. Uh, the, the critics say that um, the, the workers are some of the least earned or least paid across the world while the politicians are the most 
paid across the world and therefore the government what might need to look into cutting down on expenses uh, you know there's also the issue of raising VAT uh, from 5% to 7.5% and the workers are saying why is it then that uh, these demands cannot be met uh, but the Minister of Labor is saying that uh, as we speak the 20, uh, 2020 budget proposal has about 76% of uh, expenditure as against capital project which is 24 percent and therefore there still has to be a middle ground that they, the, the the government cannot continue to um, go into projects that they cannot handle such as uh, uh, recurrent expenditure also some analysts are saying that the states have to be um, viable enough to handle some of the expenses uh, like wages and you know to be independent from putting much burden on the government for example Lagos state which has um, uh, the, the highest IGR internally generated revenue in Nigeria at about $1 billion annually. They are saying that they can handle the, the, the minimum wage for their workers and even more. So if more states like this can, you know, uh, be made to be independent, be more productive to handle uh, minimum wage, then of course we won't have these kind of issues that we have at the moment. All right. Well, many thanks, Phil, for your insight there. Of course, that's Phil Ihaza joining us in Abuja. Well, still on labor matters, government workers in Zimbabwe say they can't afford to go to work and could be forced to stay at home. Zimbabwe is currently grappling with galloping price increases and a plunging currency that has spawned shortages of fuel and food. Now, back in June, the Southern African economy reintroduced the Zimbabwe dollar. According to the Apex Council, that brings together about 14 public sector unions, state employees who previously earned an average of $500 a month, now earn as low as $40. The unions are demanding that government employees be paid U.S. dollar indexed salaries. They want the least paid workers who get about $67 a month to receive the equiv equivalent of $575 a month. Here's a government moves to end a subsidies on fuel and electricity and a decision to reintroduce the Zimbabwe, Zimbabwean dollar has, of course, accelerated inflation uh, in the country. Well, let's move on now. Kais Syed is officially the new president of Tunisia after winning with 72.71% of the vote during the runoff. Now, his rival, Nabil Karoui, came second with 27.29%. The Parliament Speaker is currently acting as the interim president. He will convene the Parliament Bureau to hold a plenary session next Tuesday, which will be dedicated to the investiture of the new president. The Electoral Commission said 55% of those registered to vote cast their ballots on Sunday. The candidate Saeed has won the absolute majority of votes in the second round of the presidential elections. Therefore, the Independent High Authority for Elections declares him the winner of the 2019 presidential elections. We congratulated Sayed. Interim President Mohammed al Nasser also congratulated the winner of the October 13th presidential runoff. The head of state commended the role played by all stakeholders in securing the smooth conduct and transparency of the legislative and presidential elections. I thank the elections authority, government institutions, the police and army, specialized bodies, national organizations, civil society and international observers. Now, I urge political parties and freshly elected MPs to speed up the formation of a new cabinet. Analysts say the freshly elected president may take oath of office before the House of People's Representatives on Tuesday at the latest if no challenges are filed with the election authority and the administrative court. If no challenges are filed, 